Hello everyone, it's Sandra and welcome to today's video. Today we're talking all about January favorites, all the wonderful products that really stood out to me over the past month. And there's some skincare, some makeup, there is some fragrance and a couple of miscellaneous items just to keep things interesting. My two skincare standouts for January really focus on hydration and nourishment and skin barrier repair. And the best part is that both of these products are under $20. The first is the Haro Haro Wonder Black Rice First Essence for Sensitive Skin. This is my favorite hydrating toner, hydrating essence that I have tried. It's under $20. You can easily order this from YesStyle, Stylevana, Amazon. I learned about this from TikTok and I ordered it and I have just been really, really, really appreciating it. I'm almost out of it. I already ordered a backup. It's really, really hydrating. It never stings my skin. I layer multiple layers of it if I if my skin is feeling dehydrated and I need some extra hydration, it's it's beautiful. It layers well with all my other skincare products and I love it. I use it evening and morning. There are two versions of this. There is the original version, but this version for sensitive skin is free of alcohol and free of fragrance. It really doesn't smell like anything. And then the other thing is the prequel skin utility ointment multi-purpose skin protectant. This is so wonderful if you have peeling, dry patches, irritation. This is like Vaseline or the Aquaphor ointment, but better because it's a lot more lightweight. Like anytime I've tried slugging or, you know, spot treating certain areas with Vaseline or the Aquaphor ointment, it would really clog my pores. I'm very acne prone. It, it would calm down the flakiness and the irritation, but then I would get breakouts afterwards. So that wasn't really, I wasn't really crazy about that either. This has not broken me out at all. And it is more lightweight than um, Vaseline or Aquaphor. It's a bit thinner. It almost feels like a, like a face oil. The texture is very, very thin. And it's like, you know, it's a little bit, it's not sticky, but it is greasy a little bit. I wouldn't wear this during the day. If I'm trying to ramp up my tretinoin usage, um, the area around my nose and my mouth can get super, super sensitive. And if I put this ointment on before I apply my Retin-A, it kind of keeps those areas protected and I don't get that irritation and I'm able to be more consistent with my tretinoin application. Just really hydrates and protects and helps support the skin as it heals. So both of these have been incredible discoveries and both of these are products that I will see myself keeping in my rotation for the foreseeable future. Now, when it comes to makeup, I have mostly been focusing on my Project Pan items. Project Pan is a little challenge that I do every year. I select a 10 products that I really want to focus on using up in 2024. So I've really been honing in on those and I've really been enjoying it, but there has been a new addition to my complexion routine. This is the e.l.f. Camo Color Corrector and it's in the blue color. And this is so amazing for neutralizing foundations that are too orange or too peachy on me. I have a neutral undertone in my skin and a lot of foundations, especially this time of year when I have zero, you know, I get zero warmth from the sun. Everything, even foundations that tend to match me for most of the year, everything just tends to look a little bit too warm on me this time of the year. And this is amazing for adding into my foundation and it neutralizes that peachiness. It neutralizes that orange. So I have just been loving it. And the best part is that it doesn't affect the actual finish and the performance of the foundation at all. It's been really great with my Shantikai Future Skin Foundation. That one is in the shade of vanilla and I always complain about how it's a little bit too peachy for me. Problem solved. Today I, I mixed it in with my Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in shade 3.5, which again, normally it matches me pretty well throughout the year, but I need it to be just a little bit more neutral. The way I do it is I just pump out, I have this little glow recipe palette. You can also use the back of your hand. I just pump out foundation on my palette. And then I, this has a doe foot applicator. And then I just, 
do a little dab of this next to the foundation. Let me, let me get some foundation just to, to demonstrate. I don't do like a one-to-one -one ratio. You definitely have more foundation than the blue color corrector, but I mix them up on the palette, mix them up together, and then I can dot it all over my skin and then go, go in with the beauty blender or I dip my brush into this. Or when I'm using it with the uh, Chantecaille Future Skin Foundation, I just take, since that foundation is in a jar, I just take, you know, take my finger and I do four big dots on my face, four like dollops of foundation. And then I take this with the, um, with the doe foot applicator and I just do like a little dot next to each dollop of foundation. And then I blend it all in with a brush. Both of these products are in my project pan. So I've been trying to reach for them on most days. And what I've been doing is actually mixing them together and I really enjoyed the results. So this is the Westman Atelier Face Trace Stick in the shade Biscuit. And this is the Finding Ferdinand blush in the shade Latte from the summer collaboration with Khaki. Take the Westman Atelier Stick on the back of my hand and then I dip my brush into the Khaki Finding Ferdinand blush and then I combine them together with the brush on the back of my hand and this, this blush is super, super, super dewy and it's great if you have very dry skin, but I'm combination oily. So I find this almost too dewy for me and by mixing it with this, which has more of a satin finish, it tones down the, the dewiness and I just get the perfect nude pink flush to the cheeks. And I've just been really, really loving the combination. I just, like, I just like to leave the shine on, on the very high points of my cheeks. I don't like a super, super, super dewy cheek because I've got, you know, I've got some acne scarring, some texture, and I like to be intentional with the places where I have a little bit of shine. Merit Vachetta has been on heavy rotation and I just like to take this on a fluffy brush and I just very, very lightly apply it in the crease. That's how I started today's look. Just a very, very sheer application. I really love this eyeshadow. It's a very warm brown, but it builds really nicely. It just gives a really nice definition in my crease and it's really long wearing, which I appreciate. It makes for a really nice base. And then I've been playing around with this quite a lot. This is an oldie but goodie. It was an old limited edition product from Chantecaille, the Cougar Eye Quartet. I think it's from two years ago from their fall collection. It's just a really beautiful, cool toned quad. And I hadn't been reaching for it because when I bought the Makeup by Mario Etherealized palette, that just kind of took the spotlight and I neglected a lot of my other makeup. So, I, I thought it'd be fun to get reacquainted with this and I've been loving it. Um, I don't really wear this bronzy shade so much, but what I've been doing is I've been wearing this beautiful beige color just all over the lid. That's the eyelid color that I'm wearing today. And then I've been mixing this pale purple and the gray. I've been mixing them together, just a very, very light amount of both mixing them together on a slightly smaller crease brush. You know, something like the Refer 14, an amazing, amazing brush if you have a deep set eyes or hooded eyes and you need a little bit of precision as you add some shading in the crease. So I just mix them together. I dip my brush in both. I kind of mix them up in the palm of my hand. And then those two colors together make the perfect shadow color for my skin tone. And then I just very, very gently carve out a shadow. And it just adds a really beautiful natural dimension. It tones down a little bit of the warmth of Vachetta, but layers beautifully on top of it. And I've just been really into it. It's very simple, it doesn't look like much. It's very easy, but it's really polished and 
it's been wearing nicely throughout the day. So yeah, if you also have this quad and if you haven't been reaching for it in a while, maybe this will inspire you to pull it back out and play around with it. If not, I mean, this is not a groundbreaking product by any means. I'm sure, especially if you're a fan of cooler tone shadows, I'm sure you have something similar in, in your collection and hopefully this will inspire you to shop your stash. On to my favorite part, lips. I have discovered two amazing lip liners this past month and I've been wearing them nonstop since I bought them. I love them so much and they were accidental discoveries, impulse purchases. I was not planning on getting these, but I was at Ulta. I was actually looking for Dior lip liners. I have a bone to pick with Dior because they are apparently discontinuing the brown fig lip liner color and they kind of revamped their lip liners. The formula is the same, but they changed all the colors. And I went in there looking for the new Dior nude lip liners to see if any of the, the new shades match the old brown fig. And sadly, none of them do. So that was, that was really disappointing. But then I saw these lip liners from NYX and they looked really good. The first color is Los Angeles. And this actually is very similar to Dior brown fig. Obviously the formula isn't the same. I do find the Dior lip liner formula to be a lot more long wearing, but this is still really, really nice. Slightly cool toned lip liner color. I've just been craving cooler tones. I'm going to swatch it next to my um, Chanel nude brown, just so you can see. I've been wearing Chanel, Chanel nude brown a lot or the Victoria Beckham 02, but sometimes I just want something a little bit more cool toned. So you can see here how much warmer Chanel Nude Brown is compared to NYX Los Angeles. And then this is Brooklyn Thorn by NYX. This has more purple in it. And obviously these are heavy swatches of, uh, of both. So you can see here NYX Brooklyn Thorn. Brooklyn Thorn has more purple and it just works really well with my, my natural lip color. Today, I actually wore both of the NYX lip liners. I did Los Angeles and I, I just use a very light hand. I don't use that much pressure to get a softer look. So I just line my lips with Los Angeles all over and then just blurred it out, blended it out with my finger. And then I took Brooklyn Thorn and I just overlined with Brooklyn Thorn just a little bit on the sides of the lips, like on the, on the top there and then on the bottom, just to give myself some shadow. I used to use the Makeup Forever, um, what's this called? Endless Cacao. You know, Katie Jane Hughes kind of put this lip liner on my radar and she used to always use this to kind of contour her lips. This is really beautiful. It's almost like a taupe brown. Whenever I would try to use this the same way that Katie Jane Hughes was using it, as the day would progress and my lip color would be more lived in, the outer ring of my lips would just have this like brown left over and it didn't, it didn't blend in with my natural, like the, there's no brown in my natural lip color. So it would just look like, I don't know, it just looked like I ate, like a chocolate ice cream and forgot to wipe my mouth, you know? So I kind of stopped reaching for this. And for me personally, since getting this Brooklyn Thorn lip liner, I realized that for me, for my natural lip color, purple, like more purple tone works a lot better for, um, for giving myself that shadow look as opposed to brown. So this is Makeup Forever Endless Cacao. This is NYX Brooklyn Thorn. This is NYX Los Angeles. And then this is Chanel Nude Brown. I'm wearing the delicious, delicious Too Faced Jelly Gloss in the Sour Watermelon color. I am so obsessed with this. This is so much fun to just apply. It's a really, really sheer wash of pink and it's just a really nice, lip gloss. It smells like Jolly Ranchers and it just makes me so happy. It reminds me of childhood, candy, being on a sugar high and playing outside. It's just, it's really silly and it's actually a really, really nice, comfortable lip gloss formula. 
They call this a juicy lip oil slash gloss hybrid. And I have to say it really is. It's not as oily and thin as the Merit lip oil. It tastes sweet too. It just has a really nice comfortable plush feeling on the lips. It reminds me the most of the old Clarins lip oil formula before they reformulated it. And this is really, really pretty. And like I said, it's just a very, very sheer pink. They have it in other colors, other smells. I think each color has a different scent. Not the most long wearing product by any means, but it's really, really fun to just keep in your bag and reapply it throughout the day. The next lip color favorite is quite a departure, Bold and Beautiful. It's the new Byredo liquid lipstick a matte liquid lipstick in the shade Fire Grace. I've been craving a bold red lip all of January. Again, I think it's because it was dark and gloomy and gray and I really love a bright red lip to lift my spirits when it's really depressing outside. I saw these, these came out and I'm always just so inspired and so excited by by Rado makeup. I don't know, just something about the imagery and the their marketing, I like how they only release a few things. I don't know, I, it always inspires me, it always excites me. Even though I'm I'm not like buying stuff from every collection, I, st I still love seeing what they come up with. And this is their newest launch and it is the most comfortable matte liquid lipstick, the most comfortable matte lipstick I've ever tried because this is more comfortable than the Lisa Eldridge Velvet lipsticks for me personally. And it's, let me put this on. It's like a second skin. It's super, super, super weightless. Um, kind of similar to the Chanel Rouge Allure liquid lipstick or the Armani Lip Maestros, but even thinner and less silicone-y. I don't even need to put lip balm on my lips. You know, usually if I know I'm going to wear a bold matte lipstick, I will exfoliate my lips, I will prep with lip balm beforehand, then I wipe off the lip balm and then I apply the lipstick so that my lips don't get super, super dry and crusty throughout the day. I don't even need to do that with this. I can just apply this straight on top of my dry lips and it doesn't, I wouldn't say it moisturizes them, but it doesn't dry them out any further. So whatever your lip situation is before you apply this formula, that's just kind of what it stays like throughout the day. And it just feels like it just feels like nothing. It's so, so lovely. Um, it's just designed to live and move with your lips. It's not transfer resistant. It's so thin and so weightless that it's just a joy to use, honestly. And it wears so nicely throughout the day. It fades a little bit like in the center of the mouth after you're eating or drinking but that can really easily be touched up. Doe foot applicator has a very nice, precise tip. And this has a, a scent to it, but I actually really don't mind it. It's like, a, it's like a fruity, a fruity floral. Home stretch. I want to talk about fragrance really quickly. I have been sampling a lot of fragrance and I will be doing a video, just a standalone video on fragrance with my friend Dina because both of us have been ordering a ton of samples and we've been experimenting with a lot of new fragrances. So stay tuned for that. But in terms of the perfumes that I have that I've been reaching for the most for the month of January, I have this amazing mixture. This one's for my fellow Le Labo lovers. I've been wearing the Le Labo Te Matcha body lotion. This is so, oh, I love the smell of of Te Matcha and the um, perfume body lotions by Lilabo are really nice. They're really strong. The lotion itself is very nice and lightweight and I don't apply this all over my body. I apply this, like I don't apply this to moisturize my body essentially. I have my, you know, unscented body lotion that I wear on the regular. That's what I use to moisturize my body, but I use this as a fragrance layering product. So I just apply this on my upper body. Like I apply this on my neck, my chest, and my arms. And then I go in with my fragrance and I've been wearing Lilabo Rose 31 a lot. And then I just, you know, I spray my fragrance on top 
And the Te Matcha body lotion mixed with the Rose 31 perfume has been so good. It's really fresh, but it's interesting. It's, it's woody, it's fresh. You have, you know, a little bit of, of that feminine rose element to it, but it's, um, it's not sweet, it's not cloying, it's just fresh, clean, elegant, woodsy perfection. So I've been loving this. And then on days in which I want something a little bit sweeter, a little bit more floral, I've been wearing Tom Ford Soleil Neige. Oh, this is so good. This just, this smells like, like a sexy orange Tic Tac. It's like, there's some orange blossom, there's bergamot, there's jasmine. So it's very floral, but then it has this really beautiful musk vanilla dry down. So I love the way this smells. This is one of my favorite fragrances on the planet. I mean, so, so is this really. If you love citrus and floral and musk, check this out. It's beautiful. Uh, the last two random things I want to talk about. The first thing I don't have physically with me because it is heavy, but it's the Canopy humidifier. My old Dyson humidifier finally died after about seven years and they don't even make the model that I used to have anymore. And to be honest, that was such a pain in the butt to clean. You had to do like a citric acid solution and you had to clean it every week. We have very, very hard water in, in our house, in our area. So it was a pain in the butt. I always had to clean it. It would always get this like hard water deposit on it. And in order to clean it, it was hard. You have to disassemble it and do the special citric acid solution. And you had to clean it once a week and then do a deep clean once a month. It was just a lot. It was a lot. It was a pain in the butt. So when that finally died, I didn't want to buy another Dyson humidifier. So I was looking looking for other options and I stumbled upon the Canopy brand and I love the fact that they have a filter inside so if you have really hard water the filter filters out all the hard water particles so you're not left with like the weird dusty residue from from the hard water particles in the air and the best part is that it comes apart so easily and you can put it in the dishwasher to clean it so I've been loving it. It's been doing such a good job. I feel like it's doing an even better job at adding humidity than my old Dyson one did. Can't say enough good things about it. I've really been loving it and it has come in handy in the days in which we had like minus 20 degrees. It was freezing outside. The furnace was going nonstop inside. Um, it really helped add humidity to the air and make it easier for, for our skin and make it easier for us to breathe. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you is a new bag. This has been my everyday bag for the last month and a half or so. And it's by Cezanne. It's the Cezanne Romy Tote in this really gorgeous dark brown snake print. I love the texture of this. And I was in the market for a larger shoulder bag and this is amazing. I love everything about it. I love the color. I love the size. It fits in everything, everything and more. Obviously it doesn't, it wouldn't fit a laptop. It would fit an iPad, um, but it's like a bucket bag. It's if, if a bucket bag and a tote bag had a baby, this would be it. It's, it's beautiful. I love, I love the pattern. I love that it's, it's like an animal print, but because it's a dark brown, it's a bit more subdued, but it just looks really good with anything. It looks really good with an all black outfit. It adds just a little bit of extra texture. Even looks good with what I'm wearing today. I'm just wearing like black jeans and a t-shirt and a belt. It's just, it's great. Now it doesn't have any interior pockets or anything. So it is kind of like a bottomless pit. So if you carry a lot of small random things, I would recommend just putting those things into a pouch and just put the pouch in the purse. That way it's it's easier to, to get to, but you know, everything fits in here. I have, you know, my umbrella, I have my, my sunglasses, I have uh, extra dog poop bags, I have my blotting sheets, my AirPods, my lip balm, my keys, my wallet, and another lip balm, and uh, everything just fits in here. 
it's easy. Like I said, I love the fact that it, it fits over my shoulder nicely. And the best part is the color and the texture. It's, it's really nice and, and sturdy. So that's my, that's my new bag. I wanted to, to show her off to the world and introduce her. So that's the Cezanne Romy bag. They do have it in a bunch of different colors. So if if like the shiny snake skin is not your thing. They have it in a softer leather and, and other colors as well. That's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a really beautiful day. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.